Welcome to my channel, fellow Rotorheads. It's so exciting to have more than 300 of you join me on this experience of flying helicopter simulations. Some of you are here specifically to learn more about the Do-It-Yourself Collective. And this is part six in that series. I will say that this episode would be the one that made me question whether to do any of these episodes because this one is the one that is the most complex and challenging. I was able to do it but afterwards I did look back and think okay if anybody that was attempting this did not have a technical background or an engineering background would they be able to follow what I've done? And I honestly don't know and so I'm gonna have to leave that to your judgment. And so I'm going to ask you do these diagrams make your eyes bleed? Does the idea of wiring together different colored wires give you chills? And if the answer is no, then I think it's fair to proceed with the same kind of courage and determination it would take to step into a chopper cockpit and take possession of the controls. Trust that I am your trainer and I will walk you through every step of the way. In the last video, we finished calibrating and installing the Hall Effect sensor for the collective itself. Now that the Hall Effect sensor is in place, it's time to install the throttle. The throttle fits on and slides down the collective arm, but there is one problem. There's a thick pad of rubber on the end of the throttle, which has to be cut away. This pad of rubber is fairly tough, so you're going to have to attack it as best you can with whatever tools you have available. Do be careful not to cut yourself in the process. You can use a spare pipe to mark off how big the hole needs to be. What's nice about this process is it doesn't have to be accurate. As long as the pipe is loose on the throttle, that's fine. What actually holds the throttle to the pipe is the metal ring on the button end of the throttle. One of the concessions you make when assembling systems out of parts that are already available is that sometimes you just have to accept the way things fit together. In this case, you have to mount the throttle backwards so that you can operate the buttons with your thumb on your left hand. It's not the optimal arrangement, but it's necessary because these are the parts that are available to put together. Well now, we're ready to pop on the spare grip, and look at that. It looks like a collective. We're getting close. Now when you have the grip on pretty tight, you can sidle up the throttle so that it's pretty close up to the grip and rotates freely, and go ahead and tighten it down with the Allen wrench. Now we have a beautiful grip with a throttle. We're making progress. Well, now that we have the throttle attached, we have to cable manage the throttle's cable. And now we come to the purpose of that second T, which is to accept the throttle's cable into the collective arm and down the pipe. The cable comes fitted with three connectors, which are just slightly oversized to fit down the pipe, so we'll have to cut them off. Now, as we try to thread the cable down through the pipe and the T, if you find it difficult to do so, what's really beautiful about the design is that you can just take the pipe off at the T, bring the cable across that 90 degree angle, and then separately down the pipe. Then just screw the T and the rest of the arm back on. So at this point I'm going to give you an option. We have the throttle cable, and we have the tussle of wires coming from the main circuit board. Those two groups of wires need to be joined. And the question is, do you want to do that directly, or do you want to use a pair of cables and connectors? There are definitely pros and cons to each. In both cases, understand that you're mating different colored wires together. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. These are two fundamentally different systems that are being forced together into a, an unholy marriage for the purposes of our collective. You connect a colored wire from one side to a different colored wire from the other side. If you choose to do this directly, you'll solder them together 
and then you will have to insulate them so that they don't short out to anything or to other wires. The advantage is that this is the more straightforward way of connecting these two things together and the disadvantage is that future repair or upgrades will be harder because it is wired together and you'll have to unsolder the connections if you want to take it apart. A disadvantage which is mitigated with cables and connectors. If you ever want to work on this for debug or capability extensions, you simply disconnect the cables and disassemble the collective arm pulling the cable through and work on it separately. The disadvantage is, and I can tell you as a former engineer, this was a little maddening, the idea that going from left to right on the top line, bringing a brown wire to a blue wire across the cable to the correct cable match for blue, also to blue on the final wire, and then following that through on all the connections, that is a little confusing and unnerving. If it doesn't work when you plug it in, number one, you want to hope that you didn't connect the power to ground and short the whole thing out. Number two, you're going to have to go back referencing the schematic here to make sure that you made all the connections correct. And it, you may have to do that a few times to figure out where you went wrong. I did it both ways and I'm glad I have it with connectors, but I'm also surprised that I got it right. So take that as you will and decide for yourself which way you want to go. I'm going to explain both ways and I'm going to start with this schematic and explain each section so that it makes sense to you and then you can follow along and make the connections as you need to. This bundle of wires coming off of the main circuit board is from the large connector. Those wires are switches, the switches that were on the original joystick we are going to connect them to the switches on the throttle. As you recall, the throttle had three connectors. Those three connectors are represented and grouped here in the schematic. These two groups of wires in particular represent the switches on that throttle. And as you can see, they bridge across to the bundle of wires that represent the switches from the joystick on the main circuit board. The remaining group of wires from the throttle represents the actual throttle function and they connect to the three wires coming off the small connector on the main circuit board. One final note about the switches. The switches operate by grounding the wires to the ground on the main circuit board. The throttle has two switches with independent wires to be grounded out so they need to be provided with separate ground wires so that they function correctly. That's the reason for the splice in the ground wire. In practice, that just means that the throttle's violet and blue or yellow wires get connected together with a single black wire from the main circuit board. I should also point out that there is some variation in supply from the throttle manufacturers, so the one connector with the switch that has the blue or yellow wire it just means that the wire can be blue or yellow, but the function is the same and it doesn't matter which of those two yellow wires you connect to the ground. So having explained why you connect what to what, it's just a matter of matching color to color from each side. And you can just go ahead and solder the pieces together and again isolate them and insulate them so that they don't ground out to each other. Now if we do it with the connectors, we add a level of complexity. I selected these connectors based on the fact that these are PC fan extension cables. The advantage there is that they have enough wires to support all the connections between the two systems. The connectors are small enough to go through the pipe and because they're an extension you have both male and female connectors on the same cable so you can just cut them in half and you have everything you need to make the connections. Because these connectors are of course identical, make sure you mark the mated pairs after you wire them up to make sure that you connect them correctly together again in case you ever disconnect them for debug or expansion in the future. Now we've got about a 30 second video montage of all the cutting and stripping and soldering and wrapping of wire from end to end to make all the connections required to make this work.
Now before you tidy everything up, when you initially connect this together, it's important to plug it in and confirm that it does boot up and you should hear. And if you do, congratulations, that's a great first step. It means you didn't short anything out. If you didn't hear that, definitely unplug it because probably you did and you should check your connections. Assuming it did boot up, it's time to navigate to Options, Control Options, and then over to the controller T16000M. Now wiring according to the schematic we covered, the two position rocker switch gets assigned joystick button 8 and joystick button 10. and the other rocker switch gets assigned joystick button 9. Now if you've made it this far in the process, you have my respect. It's been a long slog, but to your credit, we're over the hump. This was the hardest part of this whole project. In the next video, we're going to start putting things together, buttoning things up, and we'll be ready to mount it to our chair. I look forward to your questions and comments, and until next time, may the feeling of that rotor wash over you.